Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I want to show you the new Luminar 2018. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Romilly, I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the incredible city of Paris, France. And Luminar just came out with a new version that is way faster, it's really cool. I've been using Luminar for over a year now and I love it. Let me show you. Alright, I want to show you the new Luminar that just came out, I'm very excited because it's faster than ever. So first I want to show you how I work with it with Lightroom because I'm a huge Lightroom power user so I always try to do all I can into Lightroom and then I go to Luminar. But I'll also show you how you can use Luminar as a standalone product. So first of all to make sure that Luminar works well with Lightroom, once you launch Luminar for the first time you have to go here on install plugin and you see here Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom it's installed. If it's not just click on install and you're good to go. Then you have to restart Lightroom and Photoshop for it to work. That's very important. So now, this is a photo I shot. It's what I call the Terminator view in Los Angeles. I love that photo. Uh, you know, if you looked at Terminator 4, that's the stab shot of the movie where you see the Griffiths Park, I mean the observatory, and then downtown in the back. You know, shot this with uh, 100 millimeters. I cannot tell you how many times I had to go to get a good photo. And it, it's tricky because it's often very hazy. I had a lot of failure before I got this one. And that's a 25 second exposure at 100 millimeter. And I really want to make this one pop. So I'm going to open up the shadows and bring down my highlights as I always do. Sometimes on CDs I do it a bit less. And I'm going to do my white point and my black point. The white balance is awful. So I'm just going to make it a lot more blue and a, lot, and a bit more magenta. I think that's much more awesome. Add some contrast and add some clarity. You know, basic retouching, and then I'm going to go here into the um, the crop tool. I'm going to go 16 by 9 because most of my prints have this ratio. And I think I don't want to have this light here; it grabs too much attention. I think I'm going to go like this, maybe. Yeah, something like that. And I, I'm already loving it. Now I want to show you how Luminar can just make it pop even more. So I'm going to right click and export. And I'm going to choose Luminar 2018, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustment. So it's going to take into account what we've done so far into Lightroom and it's going to open it up in Luminar. I'm going to put this in full screen mode and voila. Now Luminar is uh, has so many options. The idea of Luminar is just a series of filters which you can use on your photo. And you, so the idea is you've got presets which are here and on the right side you've got basically different workspace. Workspace are just a series of filters. So I can go here, I can clear the workspace and there is nothing there. I can click here and just use a preset. Okay, or I can go, I'm going to clear the workspace so you see I start from scratch. And usually what I like to do is I like to work with the professional workspace. So the first part of the professional workspace is basically like Lightroom. It's the same setting. So I've already done this part in Lightroom, so I'm not going to use that. Uh, Denoise, I didn't do it in Lightroom, so I might well do it there, but that's not the plus. Okay, vibrance and saturation, I didn't do it, and I could have done it in Lightroom. Again, not the plus. Okay, Accent AI Filter. Now, Accent AI Filter, check it out. When you do it, it basically opens up shadows and does something to your highlights. Now, I like what it does here. I hate what it does there. So any filter in Luminar, you can just click on the brush, click on brush, and you see, make sure it's on paint. I can make the brush very soft, opacity 100%. I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger. I'm just going to paint. So I'm painting the effect only where I want it. And you can see here, you have a little mask. Remember, white reveals, black conceals, just like in Photoshop. And you see there's just a little line of white, meaning that this um, effect is only going to be here. Okay, dehaze is another big one. You have that in Lightroom, but I like the way that dehaze does uh, in um, in Luminar. But on this one, I'm not going to use it. Remove color cast, I'm not going to use. Now, advanced contract. Advanced contract is one of the big plus of Luminar, which no other software has. So if you boost the highlights, look what it does on the highlights. It's basically going to give more. I don't know. It just something does something great on the highlights here. I can use the balance. Yeah, I want to make it maybe like this. So I'm just looking at the highlights, the very brightest part of the photo. I love what it does. Let's see the mint tones. Mint tones is big also. I love that. Okay, let's play around with the balance. 
Okay, and then the shadows, I didn't like what he did on shadows. I didn't use it. I usually use often highlights and mid-tones. But check it out. If you want to see what a filter does, you can go here before. And it's going to basically before that filter and after that one filter. It's a huge difference. And, you know, it's non-destructive, so I can always go back and lower the amount if I think it's too much. But I really wanted to make this photo pop. And, you know, how I love saturated photos. And, and you know, you know, I mean, if you watch a CD at night, I want to communicate the feeling that I, I had and I had this like very strong colorful feeling that's what I'm trying to communicate some people think it's too much I love it anyways uh, okay so that's basically on the professional uh, you know workflow that's what I did now I can just go here and add filter and I'm gonna add you see all this filter in yellow is filter that I love and I just click on the little star and now they become part of my favorite and I can fade, you know, do my favorite. And one of the favorite that I have that I really love is a detail enhancer. Now, detail enhancer basically is sort of clarity on steroid, and it's got small, medium, and large detail. So I'm going to boost a bit of small, a little bit more of medium, and a little bit more of large. Okay, I don't like what it does on the entire photo, but I like what it does on downtown. So same thing, I can take a little brush, and I'm just going to brush the effect on downtown because. I want to make downtown pop a bit more. And if you think it's too much, non-destructive again, I can just lower the settings. And voila. And I'm done with this. So now I can show you here the before. That's after Lightroom adjustment, and that's the before. Before, after. And it makes a huge difference. So I'm going to apply and get this back into Lightroom. Now I want to show you another way to go about it, and that's just to go into Luminar directly and open up in Luminar directly option is you don't use at all Lightroom, you just directly work with a Luminar. So for example, I'm going to open an image and I'm going to take this one, a small vintage 1 DNG. And on this one, I'm just going to go really fast just to show you. Uh, but basically, so I'm not using Lightroom. This is just a raw file and I'm going to do my usual workflow that I do uh, in uh, Lightroom. Open up the shadows, bring down the highlights, do my black, do my white you know, find the right white balance on thing on this one. Shade is going to do well. Oh, no, actually on this one, I want to do daylight uh, and maybe add a bit of magenta. So I'm happy with that. Then, then I can go and continue to do my checklist. I can add a bit of vibrance. I can boost the AI. Now look at the AI. I love that. I'm just going to boost a little bit of it. I like what it does everywhere. Okay, dehaze, I think is going to be big on this photo. Dehaze, ooh, love dehaze. And then advanced contrast, my favorite, that you don't find nowhere else. Uh, just that filter is worth the price of this plugin. Uh, I'm going to go into the highlights. You see how it brings big my highlights and my mid-tones. And same thing, I don't think I like what it does on the shadows, so I'm not going to use it on the shadows. Okay, polarizing filter, you see, I want to make the blue more blue. So up, I'm going to go here. And now I, I go from blue to very warm. All right, but I want to use more filters, so I'm going to go add filter. This time I'm going to go into my favorite, and the other one that I love is the golden hour filter. The golden hour filter, basically, I can just add this. I can boost the amount, and I love what it does here around the sun and on, on some of the house there. So what I'm going to do, but I don't like it everywhere, so I'm going to take a little brush, and I'm going to brush the effect. I'm going to brush the effect here and brush the effect on the city. And it just gives like a good golden hour feeling. I think it's a little too much there. So you know what? I'm just going to lower the amount. Something like this. And um, okay, next, let's see what else I can do. Maybe a little bit of detail enhancer. So I'm going to add another filter here. And I'm going to go detail enhancer. Same thing that I did, you know, maybe a little bit of small, medium, large details. And I'm going to paint it. I like what it does here just on this roof here. I don't want it in the water. I don't want it on the clouds. I just want it here on the village. I think on the village, it's going to be awesome. And uh, so voila. Okay. And, you know, I got I got a little dust here and there. So we can get rid of that also. So I'm going to click on done. You've got different tools here. And one of them is called the Erase tool. Or you can press Command E. Once you launch this, I find it honestly not as good as the one in Lightroom. I think they need to improve that tool because it it's just is slow. That's the one thing I like. That's I, I like to do all my cleaning into Lightroom and not into Luminar. But let's say you don't have Lightroom and you want to be able to do it in Luminar. The way it works is you can, you know, you can bump up the size 
and I can make this voila and uh, so you just press basically uh, let me make a smaller size yeah and I don't know I, I find it's not as smooth as the one that we have in Lightroom because it doesn't doesn't seem real time so I would not I never do it in Luminar I'll be honest with you and you click on done and it, I mean it, it does work you know and if you if you don't want to have Lightroom and you want to do everything with Luminar, you can, and I hope they're going to improve this tool. That's not why I, I use Luminar. I use Luminar for all these filters that you find nowhere else, like the golden arrow, the foliage filter, uh, and voila, it's clean like a bird. Once you've done that, it, it, it added a new layer uh, because it has to start from over with all the erase, the, everything that's erased. I think the only thing that I want to do is maybe make the top of the photo brighter. Well, there's a filter for that. Um, it's the adjustable gradient. And the way it works is you can just make it darker and you can even go to click on set orientation and you can decide where your filter is going to be. Voila. And if you want one to be at the bottom, you, have, you, ask, you add one more time and you click on bottom and you make the exposure darker. So you have one filter for the bottom and you can, you know, like on Lightroom, you can make add contrast or vibrance, uh, you know, on the, on, the, on the top and the bottom. So if I want to adjust the bottom, I click on this filter of the bottom, click on set orientation. And this one, I just really want it at the bottom. So voila, and uh, let me show you the before. Oops, I have to click on done, before, after. <laughs> what a change it's an amazing software and you, you know if you think it's too colorful you know because you're not crazy like me you know what you are completely you can go here I can go to uh, uh, essential and go to saturation and vibrance and just you know lower the vibrance for example and make this less saturated you know but I like it this way I don't know why I, I mean it was crazy that sunset you know sometimes I think people don't realize how red how yellow and how colorful a scene can be for real. We're so used to have photos which are not that saturated that we lose the sense of how much something can be. I mean, I've seen some sunset that I don't even think saturation on the screen can give justice to. Anyway, that's just my viewpoint. I love this type of photography. Uh, we have an amazing offer for just a few days on Luminar. Uh, check the link below and uh, get it if you don't have it use this link uh, i am being paid for this i'm getting a commission on every time you buy luminar but i only promote products that i actually use and i use luminar all the time i've you know people ask me to do videos because i've got half million subscribers on any on anything and i refuse 90 percent of the proposal i've accepted to do it on luminar because i only do videos on products i truly use on my daily workflow so just to be clear i do make money with this but you will not regret it click the link below and just create and have fun. Thank you very much.